Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today we're going to run through the list of the top five perfumes for the month of April together. So, April is an interesting month because it begins with April Fools and there is a trickery and sorcery in the air. And one might think, well, can a perfume be a trick as well? Nah, it could. It could. It happened to me once a long time ago where uh, I purchased a perfume and uh, it arrived and the packaging and the bottle was in the packaging. And when I opened the packaging, the bottle inside was empty. And this was not a secondhand perfume. This was ordered online from a shop. And I was very distraught <laughs> because could you imagine like, oh my gosh, like how do you prove now like you contact the perfumery and you how can you prove to them that that they sent you an empty bottle and also who who used that perfume up and then like thought that they could get away with selling an empty bottle i really i was so shocked anyway i did contact the perfumery and i said to them hey guys this has never happened before to me like just to let you know like the perfume that arrived is the bottle is empty is this an april fools joke you know and it was not the 1st of April, but that's kind of as far as I would see April Fool's happening. Uh, now, on another note, you could create a perfume called April Fool's. How would that perfume smell? Hmm. Interesting to consider, maybe for another video. But let's get to the first perfume uh, of April of my list. And also, while we're doing this, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and thumb up the live stream or the video, actually. I am filming this video live, by the way, for my Tier 2 members and patrons mm, on my main channel. So you can also join me on Patreon. A super Dacob all spelled together there as well. So I have my live chats on the sidebar here. Guys, let's see if you can guess what perfumes we got in the selection this month. And you watching later, let me know in the comment section down below what your favorites are for April. Now, Okay, the first one, I'm going to begin with a breeze, honey. This thing is majestic. It makes me so happy. I don't know what it is about this perfume. It has not been on my list for the longest time, but I have rediscovered it for myself, perhaps because quiet luxury is all the rage at the moment. So I've kind of rediscovered it, but it is the most elegantly formulated, composed cologne ever made in my humble opinion i haven't smelled all of them i haven't lived thousands of years but this is the one chanel's eau de cologne which is coincidentally not focusing for some odd reason come on maybe the camera isn't filming at the moment but uh, so there you go oh now it focused eau de cologne by chanel it's the only cologne concentration that Chanel sells at the moment of any perfume. They've discontinued all of their Eau de Cologne concentrations many years ago. This is the only one you can still buy is Eau de Cologne. And in fact, it's literally called Eau de Cologne. There's no other name added. The concentration of the perfume gives the name to the perfume. It's that linearly simple and clean, just as the smell of the fragrance. I mean, this thing, oh my gosh. It's just so delicate, elegant, beautiful. It's light. This is not a perfume that's going to last you seven hours, okay? This is gone in, in, a, in a whiff, you know? Two, three hours tops, and then you got to refresh it. But there's something so beautiful about the delicate nature of this perfume and how wonderfully balanced it is, how gorgeously incredible the ingredients are in this one. It makes me happy, literally invigoratingly happy to sniff this in the morning right after waking up, spraying this on, because this cologne is not only like colognes usually are, right? Citrusy, bergamotty, all of that stuff. And the top notes, this one has a hint of warmth in there, like a vanilla, like a very, very shy, shy, warm hint of vanilla, which is not sweet, but it almost tells you it could go a little bit sweet. And it's that Chanel aldehyde accord as well that gives it um, a sparkly champagne-y vibe with warmth at the base. Oh my God. This is divine. Seriously, seriously. Especially, you know, spring and summer. It makes you feel fresh and clean, just like you put on a white linen or cotton shirt 
slightly oversized and um, freshly ironed or just sun-dried, crispy. Oh, man. I mean, it's... Yeah, you just... You just feel like you want to bathe in this over and over and over again. And the beautiful thing about it is it allows you to do so. So a lot of people might be annoyed by the fact that, oh, you guys spray a perfume. You need, you know, you don't want to have to respray it over and over again. Some people want to spray it before they leave the house and then they want to smell the whole day. Well, yeah, there are those perfumes, but then there's also another faction, uh, which I'm a part of. I love to respray my perfume throughout the day. I love the gesture of reapplying perfume. It's something also very typical to a lot of um, people in France. Uh, French people also love to reapply fragrance throughout the day, even more intense ones. But there's a whole culture of carrying your perfume with you on the go and reapplying it. Now, if a perfume is very heavy, not I don't mean the bottle, I mean the smell of it. Reapplying out and about, you know, it can be a little bit detrimental to your surrounding and to the people around you because they might be irritated by it. You could also say, well, that's their problem. But if you want to feel really comfortable reapplying your perfume because you enjoy the gesture of reapplying and re-sniffing the fresh opening zestiness of it, then Eau, Cologne, uh, Eau de Cologne by Chanel is perfection because it allows you just that. And every time you reapply it, it smells like the most elegantly formulated cologne ever. It, and it really smells like clean linen sheets and, and fresh, clean, crispy, white cotton shirts. It, this thing is amazing. And it smells like they've dried in the, in the sun next to the ocean somewhere or next to the sea. There's like a salty hint in there as well. Really divine. Such happy vibes, happy, happy vibes, happy mood. Eau de Cologne is part of the Chanel is Exclusives collection. It's the only non-Eau de Parfum in that collection, which makes it cost a little bit less than the others because it's a lower concentration. Still very expensive, unfortunately. The next perfume, uh, discontinued, but I adore it, uh, especially in warmer months. April being particularly fascinating because of the April showers. So there's that kind of warmth, but also it's still cold and it kind of goes through all the motions um, throughout the day. Still, still not too hot, but elegantly cool, I want to say. And uh, this month I'm really kind of re-obsessing with this one. That would be Rive Gauche pour Homme in the Eau de Toilette by Yves Saint Laurent. Discontinued. This is the first formulation of it. In the old school aluminum, metal, uh, or tin, I think it's aluminum, um, bottle. Man, this thing is gorgeous. It's just old school barbershop vibes, but warm and it's like a shaving foam with a floral accord and a balmy clean note it just makes you smell like a clean million bucks seriously and trina said i thought i was the only person who loved to reapply no no it's a it's a thing there there you're not alone <laughs> There's more of us out there, Trina. We love to reapply perfume throughout the day. Um, oh, man, this thing is gorgeous. Aisha says, the bottle. It's a gorgeous bottle. And Tina says, I have the other version and never gets old to me. <sighs> Rive gauche pour homme. What a travesty that they discontinued this one uh, because... Um, it was reformulated, and you could get it in the glass bottle, in the square glass bottle. I don't even know if it still exists at this point. But uh, at a certain point, they also created in it like a more concentrated version, like uh, Rive Gauche pour Homme Concentré or something. I tried that one as well. Also not bad, but the Eau de Toilette is where it's at for me. Just beautiful perfume. Also crisp and clean with that barbershop shaving foam 
almost like Old Spice aftershave balm smell to it. It's 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 gorgeous, but then it's also warm. Just beautiful. Really, really great for April. It warms the spirit up and gives you that hope for, you know, later spring and summer. The next fragrance on my list is uh, is a tuberose uh, based perfume. Very synthetic, but we love it. It's um, an 80s dream come true, still in production, thankfully. Considered a, a cheapie nowadays. Yay for us who love this perfume so much. It's that blue genie in a bottle, baby. It is Lulu. Lulu by Cacharel, the Eau de Parfum. I think this is the Eau de Parfum. Yeah, it's the Eau de Parfum. Reformulated. I love the reformulation. Adore the reformulation. It is like a cupcake in a bottle, you guys. It has the floral accord, the powdery, irisy note, which also dries you down. It smells as of a dry tuberose, a powdery tuberose with shoulder pads and slight lipsticky accord there as well. Rosy touch, peachy rosy touch. Lulu is just a miracle of a perfume and uh, usually reformulations do more harm than good. Uh, I'm fine with the current version of Lulu. I, I adore it. I, I love the original 80s version as well, but I do prefer the new version. Can you believe? Ha! Go figure. Don't shout it everywhere because if L'Oreal hears that, they're probably going to like, oh, they're like, oh, they're liking it? Okay, then we can water it down even more to make, to maximize our profits even more. So, but I, I really adore Lulu. Morning, evening, day and night. Oh my God, it matches so well the, the blue skies in the background, doesn't it? Look, it can be just like, oh, look, it's a little skyscraper. Right next to the other buildings. Like, where's Lulu? Where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Um, so yeah, Lulu is my number three. It also smells like a vanilla-based, powdery, irisy Cabbage Patch Kid. You know how Cabbage Patch Kids were always scented? The little peachy skin smells kind of like Lulu. I adore it. Adore it. The next one is, I think, always in my top April perfumes. I'm not so sure. I would have to look back to my older videos in the past years. Also really fascinating to check out my older selections for the different months because I love seeing how my olfactive flavors and tastes evolve throughout the years. You know, like, oh, what did I like in April of last year? Interesting. What am I liking in April of this year? And, but this is one of those perfumes that just, I don't know what it is about it. It's a staple of mine. It's always in my... April selection. And even if it doesn't make it maybe to the video selection of the top five, it's definitely in my top 10 or top 15 every April. It's an incense. And that would be <laughs> Jassalmer Incense Comme des Garçons, Series 3. Jassalmer is a miracle of a perfume. Oh, I love it so much. It is a happy incense. Incense has a tendency of being dry, somber, almost, you know, like religious experience, smelling it, what have you, blah, blah, blah. Not Jassalmer. Jassalmer is a happy incense. It's a warm incense. It's not a church-like incense. It is a spicy incense, almost like a honeysuckle spicy incense. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, this thing... I'm going to spray it on top of the Eau de Cologne. I don't care. Oh, I, this brings back so many memories. Oh my gosh, my youth. <laughs> Used to wear this one a lot growing up. Divine. It, it's, it, it's slightly peppery as well, you know? It gives you a sweetness, a clove carnation accord with uh, powdery nuances and the incense just bubbles up. It's like the dust of the incense mixes all of the spices up and they're kind of all floating in the air at the same time. It's just... 
Oh, so beautiful. Trina says about Lulu. It's still one of my favorites. Love both versions. Reminds me of picnics. Trina, who made incense by Jassal Mer? It's Comme des Garçons. They only exist in 50 mil bottles. There's five incenses in the Series 3 collection by Comme des Garçons. Uh, one of them being Jassal Mer. Then they have Zagorsk, also really beautiful. Kyoto, also really beautiful. Avignon, also really beautiful. And I forget the fifth one. Jassal Mer, Zagorsk, Avignon... Kyoto. I'm missing the fifth one right now. Hmm, does anybody know in the chat? Let me know. Divine. Divine perfume. Perfection for spring. Now, this is not a perfume that I, right now, wear in the morning. Like, it's not something that I would just, like, wake up and the first thing I put on is uh, Jassal Mer. You know, Eau de Cologne by Chanel is something that I can wear immediately when I wake up, even though I'm still like hungry in the morning. You know, this is not a perfume you like to wear when you're hungry. Zonzouet. Because this one is going to make your stomach growl. It's going to make you go even more hungry. You know how some perfumes uh, are great when you can wear them after you've eaten? And some perfumes uh, are not good after you eat. Some perfumes are not good to wear on an empty stomach because they make you even more hungry and they give you kind of cramps in your stomach because they just stimulate, because they smell a little bit gourmandish maybe and they stimulate your stomach to kind of start working. <laughs> and uh, But some perfumes are also good on an empty stomach, right? Well, this is one of those that is really good after lunch or after dinner. Like when you're nice, satiated, you're good, and then you move on. Um Oh, Audrey says, I cannot wear carnal flower on an empty stomach. I'm trying to remember if I can. Probably not. It's a very intense one. Yeah, you have to eat before carnal flower. I think I agree with you. Yeah. And if anybody in the chats knows what are the five incenses by Comte de Garçon, let me know because I'm still trying to remember the fifth one. And speaking of the fifth one, we're down to the fifth uh, the top five of April or for April 2023. Boy, oh boy. I guess I guess there's a, there's like a theme running throughout this uh, selection. And th that one would be uh, another potpourri. You know, we had the potpourri with the Jassalmer of all the incenses mixed up. We had the kind of a potpourri with Lulu, uh, that tuberose, but then also with the iris combined um, with kind of a sweet accord. There as well, very 80s shoulder pads, put putty of things and emotions. Oh, thank you, Han. Yes, Orazate is really hard to remember, uh, is the fifth um, incense from the Comte de Gasson incense series. Thank you so much, Han Solo. Our Jedi helped us. Now, number five is um, definitely a perfume you should apply after eating because it has a brandy accord. It's almost like a digestif after food, but it's gorgeous in the, right after lunch or after brunch. And that would be another Chanel. One of the loves of my life that has also not been on my lists for the longest time. But again, number 18, Chanel. This is the Eau de Toilette concentration. Maybe you can see... In the back, on the back of the sticker, it always says the concentration. But it's very hard to see with this lighting. They have discontinued the Eau de Toilette. It is now available as an Eau de Parfum. So, oh my gosh, this thing is amazing. Um, yeah, it's kind of Chanel's own distilled brandy. They don't sell, brand Chanel does not sell their own brandy. Well, they do in here. You can't drink this though. This is not to be drunk, drunk. Mm -mm. You're not supposed to drink it. But you can smell it. So the story has it that Chanel does distill their own brandy for this particular perfume, <laughs> for the Accord. And it does give that barrel, the smell of the barrel containing the brandy smell with a mix of a lot of different dried fruits and flowers. And it creates this potpourri of a brandy. It's just divine. There's a musky um, 
base to it. Of course, we have the aldehydes in the top, and then we have the umbret musk in there. Mm. It's sweet and cold at the same time, rough as a diamond in a special way. Now, I've reviewed this perfume already many years ago, and you can check out all the details about number 18 and the history of the address in Paris of uh, number 18 and what they sell at number 18. I mean, I gave you a little hint just a second ago, but this thing is divine. Really beautiful in the evenings as well, uh, especially when there's a nice wind, like a little breeze of wind in the background and it's cold and warm. This thing gives you freshness, but it also gives you um, a lot of emotions and feelings. It Number 18 is uh, very much multifaceted like a diamond, perfectly cut, perfectly tailored and trimmed. And it stays uh, very, very strong, even though it kind of appears to be light. From the bottle, it stays very, very strong for the longest time. And I get over seven hours uh, smelling it on me, also of projection of this one in the Eau de Toilette form. I would have to rediscover the Eau de Parfum just to see how the current formulation of the Eau de Parfum is, if I like, enjoy it or not fully. But the Eau de Toilette is amazing. And when they discontinued this one back in 2016... I stocked up on it, so I do still have a brand new sealed 200 ml bottle of it and another 75 ml bottle as well, because this one, as you can see, is kind of ending. So I do have, I do have it kind of stored and saved, but then of course I'm kind of sad to, you know, it's, <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. So to kind of use those batches, I'm a little bit sad. So I'm thinking I will definitely go to the Chanel Beauty Boutique and will re-sniff number 18 in the Eau de Parfum form just to see if I am if I can love it as much as I love the Eau de Toilette. And if I do love it as much as I love the Eau de Toilette, or if I love it in a different way than the Eau de Toilette, I might purchase the Eau de Parfum because that one is still in production. So just to kind of, you know, have have both and then maybe make a comparison video as well one day. Beautiful evening fragrance late afternoon and into the night. Such a mood, such a vibe. Also quite, this one, not a panty dropper, but you know, as some perfume reviewers would like to say or call perfumes, but this one, maybe more than a dropper, it makes you kind of get into the mood yourself. It's a, it's a frisky type of vibe going on with this one. Gorgeous. Thank you, Han, for correcting it. It's Orzazate with two Zs, not one. So it's not Orzate, it's Orzazate or something like that. Yeah, that's the fifth Comme des Garçons incense fragrance. So these were my top five. I hope you've enjoyed this little journey down April Lane 2023 in the Fragrant Bunker. Thumb up the video if you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite perfumes for April are. And let's keep the conversation going. And subscribe. Never give up on love. Bye.